Welcome class to science and welcome to our last section of air and water and maybe some of you guys are noticing my mustache um, those that have been following along with King Arthur and those that have been reading with me in my videos you probably heard me talk about possibly growing my mustache out because of all of the the knights and King Arthur that have mustaches and how awesome they are and so I'm you know growing out my inner Sir Lancelot right now and growing my mustache out so hopefully it's not too ugly but anyways not to take up too much time I want these lessons to be productive and not too long so we're gonna jump into our last section of air and water okay but so but before we do what do we like to always do before we jump into the current lesson we like to review what we learned last time so that we can continue to build upon each lesson and that our knowledge will continue to build upon each other. And so what did we learn last time? Well, we talked about Earth and we talked about a name that a lot of people refer to our Earth and it has a color in it. That's right, we call it the blue planet. And why is it called the blue planet? I know some of you guys are saying you guys are doing good because over two thirds of the planet is water. And so from outer space, if you were to look at the planet, it looks like a blue planet because most of it is water. And so during the lesson last time, we learned a lot about water. We learned about the sea water, fresh water, and then we learned about the water cycle with um, evaporation, precipitation, condensation, right? How the water moves through our um, through the water cycle right we don't really lose uh, the water it just it goes into different forms right water evaporates and then condensates into clouds and those clouds are moved around and then it precipitates either through rain or snow and it comes back and goes into the ground and it just has this cycle right that's why it's called the water cycle so this last section is going to be how do we keep our air and water clean Right? We know that air and water is so important to us as humans, to other animals and organisms, and the earth as general. So it's very important to keep it clean so that we can you know, be healthy and take care of this planet. So that is what we're going to learn today. How, we keep, how can we keep our air and water clean? That's the title of this section. So like always, let's get our minds ready for what we're going to be learning by reading the Make a Connection section right here. So read with me. It says, Trash and other wastes have made this water unsafe to drink or to swim in. What are some other ways in which water can be harmed or spoiled? Okay, so as we read, let's we're going to figure out other ways that water can be harmed and spoiled so that we don't do that. And as we can look right here, we can see this picture. And you can guess all this littering is probably harming and spoiling water, which is not good. So before we dive in, remember that you have your checkpoints that you're supposed to do, small little, you know, two to three sentences discussion posts to answer, and then also your apply science concept. And then after this section, you will also have your air and science unit assessment. So I um, want to get you guys all prepared for that. So let's dive in to our first section, which is air and water pollution. So follow along with me. And as you can see, these bolded words are your vocabulary words and those that were on top of it and did the vocabulary at the beginning of this air and water section as we read these vocabulary words and knowing the definition you'll be able to follow along and understand so make sure you do the vocabulary words at the beginning so that as we read this section you will understand what's going on air and water are important natural resources and here's a little definition of it, or materials found in nature that people need or use. So that's the little definition of natural resources. Earth's air and water are known as renewable resources, right? The water cycle, we don't lose it, it just gets renewed because they cannot be used up. However, air and water can be ruined by pollution. The adding of harmful substances to the environment, okay? So that's kind of a short definition of pollution. Some air pollution occurs naturally, for example. A volcanic eruption adds dust, air, and gases to the air. Much air pollution, though, is caused by human activity, 
meaning mainly the burning of fuels and vehicles, power plants, and factories. The result is often thick smog, a brownish haze that forms over cities. And if we look down at this picture right here, or these two right here, it's kind of showing some pictures of factories and the smog and haze that comes from pollution. Chemical waste from industries, smoke from burning trash, and dust from farming and mining also pollute the air. Air pollution causes health problems such as breathing difficulties and scratchy sore eyes and throats. Certain gases and polluted air may increase the amount of the sun's heat that is trapped by the atmosphere and make Earth's climate warmer. This is called global warming. Waste and air sometimes mix with moisture to produce acid rain. Acid rain can damage buildings, destroy forests, and harm lakes and ponds. Also, certain chemicals act to decrease the amount of ozone in the stratosphere. A reduced ozone layer is less able to shield us from dangerous ultraviolet lights from the sun. So our pollution is making it more dangerous from our sun, sun rays. Water pollution can occur when waste of runoff carry fertilizers and pesticides. Um, sorry, water pollution can occur when waste of, or runoff carrying fertilizer and pesticides enter bodies of water. And so I, that's why sometimes when you go to Home Depot or Walmart, you see some natural like fertilizer or natural like weed killer, right? Because we don't want those uh, chemicals to be running into our waters, right? Our water seeps into the ground and we have our groundwater, and if our fertilizers and pesticides are killing, are just polluting the groundwater, it will end up polluting our water cycle. Water pollution spoils our fresh drinking water. It can also harm the fish and other organisms that live in water. Okay, and here's a picture of our water being polluted. So your first checkpoint for air and water pollution is list some sources of air and water pollution, okay? We went through a couple of those in there. All right, so now we've understood what water pollution is and how we as humans and even natural, uh, um, natural sources of pollution like volcanoes that we learned um, can pollute the air and water. Let's learn how we can conserve our air and water to keep it nice and healthy. So the protection and wise use of natural resources such as air and water is called conservation. Okay, so conservation laws such as the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act help protect our air and water. So our government has put in these laws to help us better be regulated to keep our air and water clean. So let's learn a little bit more about these laws. So because of these laws, cars and factories now release fewer harmful waste into the air. People are also expanding the use of energy sources that do not produce air pollution, such as wind, power, and solar energy. Vehicles that run on electricity or hydrogen fuel cells are almost pollution-free. Also, the chemicals that affect the ozone layer are being reduced or banned by many nations, so it's a global effort to reduce the pollution, which is awesome. Laws also protect our sources of drinking water, such as groundwater and reservoirs. A reservoir is a natural or human-made lake used for water storage. Okay. Um, drinking water is filtered and cleaned in treatment plants. So this is what I'm looking at. If you look over here, here is a water treatment plant right here that can remove the bacteria and pollutants that might cause disease, diseases or harm the water. Um, other laws prevent waste from being dumped into or near bodies of water. Although water is a renewable resource, the amount of fresh water available in certain places and during dry periods is limited. And here in Gallup, we have dry periods, right? Um, when I first moved here, I learned that I can only water my lawn on certain days so the other side of the city can water their lawn on certain days so that we don't overuse our water and because we only have a limited use, a limited amount in this area. And so right here, so it's important to use water um, wisely and not waste it. In the United States, the average daily water use per person is more than 150 gallons. Everyone can help using water by using less. For example, turning off the faucet while brushing your teeth in the morning and at bedtime can save up to eight gallons a day. There you go, guys. There's an example of saving water. Okay, so when you're brushing your teeth at night, and hopefully you're doing it morning and night, 
sometimes I struggle in the morning. The morning's my weakest time to remember brushing my teeth, but I'm almost 100% at night. But when we brush our teeth, we can churn off the water while we're scrubbing our teeth. And you can help your family members do that. Also, maybe if you hand wash your dishes, something that I learned from my wife is uh, when you're washing the dishes, you get it wet, turn the water off, scrub it with your, you know, your little scrub brush, and then turn the water back on when you rinse it. Um, once you get in a, a good habit of that, that's a good way to save water as well. We don't wanna just have water running for no reason. And then here's another example of conserving air and water using electricity, like cars with electricity. Okay, and guys, that is it. Isn't that cool? So uh, your last checkpoint for air and water is give two examples of ways that our air and water are being protected. We just went over those, but if you, um, you know, maybe lost track or, or um, kind of zoned out for a second during this lesson, just refer back to this page, page 23. Um, one, two, three, four. Just four paragraphs, um, pretty, um, pretty short. You can reread re that to answer that checkpoint. You can also look at these two pictures for some hints how to answer that. And then for your apply science concept, which is your last apply science concept um, for air and water is in your science so it says in, in your science notebook, but in the text entry box for your apply science assignment on Canvas, um, record, so write out how you and your family use water and for what purposes. So how do you use your water during the day? Do you use it for brushing your teeth, drinking, cleaning, things like that? And then determine one way you can conserve water by using less of it. And then share your idea with us in the text entry box but also share it with your family, okay? If you have a family of, of three or four, all of you guys doing that same thing can really conserve water, right? Just one person can save eight gallons a day by turning the faucet off by brushing their teeth while they're brushing their teeth. So four times eight is, some of you math whizzes probably already said it, 32, right? So four people can save up to 32 gallons a day, and that brings 150 gallons uh, or that will, for one person, that brings 158 down to 142. And that, you know, little bit by little bit makes a big difference. But that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed the air and water section. It was a lot of fun reading it and talking with you guys and, and learning about this with you. Best of luck with your air and water unit assessment. I know you'll do great. If you have questions, please reach out to me and um, I can help you be prepared for that. But that is our lesson for today. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you guys in the next lesson. Have a good day.